intuitive energies my name is Jane and this is your extended now if you haven't seen this morning's reading I would highly suggest that you go watch that one first it'll make a lot more sense and now I'm going to do your extended so I'm going to use the soul's journey to begin with <laughs> and uh, we're gonna see what these cards have to say So this morning we're looking into your past, and the Ten of Pentacles came up, and the Family Card Oracle came up when we were doing the readings on Sunday, and I feel that your past has your definition of many, many things. It has conditioned you, and again, this week is all about being in a heart space of love. If anybody's in your energy, you don't hate them, you don't hate what people have taught you. They've all come in with lesson and wisdom for you to utilize. To make your best self, okay? You can take lemons and turn it into the sweetest and most beautiful lemonade you've ever tasted. So never regret things or be mad at people for showing you things, okay? Even if it's in the worst way. Again, we have cards that keep like flipping in the deck and it's written acceptance. So this is just bringing in what I'm talking about, okay? Accept the gift that they gave you, even if it's can look like a horror story. <laughs> and I'm not talking out of turn here, Pisces. I've had my own horror stories. Fear. Okay, so I realize that I'm testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. And this is might have been a lot of the lessons that they've taught you on how to be in the past, Pisces. Um, may have come of a place of fear, okay? Fear of being homeless to have that job for 40 years, the fear of having instability or what their perception, their perception of was, especially with the Emperor card here, okay, that stability, that authority, that build something so strong, like an immovable mountain, that nothing can get in the way, and that was propelled by fear of lack, okay. Oh, and this one actually did turn in the deck. Indecision. I use my intuition in all aspects of life. Okay, so the next question they're going to talk about is the fact that you may feel like this is brand new territory, and what do I do with this? It's not like nobody has taught me what I've been taught is how it's been done forever. Underneath the deck is trust. It says I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. I use my intuition. In all aspects of life. So it's telling you to rely strongly on what your internal intuition, your inner guides are saying within you, Pisces, to lead you on the path. Um, not, not, the, not a bad path, the good one, the one that belongs to you, Pisces, the one that will bring you your abundance. I love the fact that you have purple in both of these. Okay, you have a lot of purple and reds. Like they both, they both have, it's just, it's just a flip, okay? I like that. And you have the orange, yellowish, solar plexus and sacral chakra, all the powerhouses, the lower chakras, the body chakras, okay? Yeah, I feel that very much, Pisces. I, as I said in this morning, the twos, the fours, the eights, the very human, um, yeah, the human energies that drive you, okay, and it says here, the outcome of all choices in life is determined by two emotions, fear and love, your soul is made of the energy of love, and fear is an earthly manifestation of a challenge, to embrace and wallow in fear is to go against your very being, fear and it's many guises. It's the obstacle that your soul uses to test its tenacity to stay on track. For a soul, human life can be very difficult. But acknowledging that your soul's true nature is love will always help you on your path. When fears rears their ugly heads, it's really an opportunity for you to stare it in the eye, turn that doubt into trust. Ah, remember what I said underneath the deck? Turn it into what? did I say? Yes, trust. Okay. View it as a teacher. 
What lesson are you learning from these fearful emotions? The more you use the energy of love to diffuse fearful situations, the less often they will present themselves. So they're telling you, when you're looking at these, um, changing the way these are working, okay? Because you just don't want to do it that way anymore. Fear will set in because you're going to be afraid, okay? But remember, if you go inside of love and inner knowing, you're going to get a lot of guidance when it comes to that. A lot, a lot, a lot of guidance. So let's see the indecision here. Your soul and spirit manifest in this physical dimension. Even though you may feel limited by the constraints of your body, the two, the four, this, this, the eight, okay? Your connection to the infinite wisdom of the universe is always available to you in the form of intuition. The three, the six, the nine, okay? Um, spirit only wants the best for you. And by listening to your inner voice, you will always be guided by the proper outcome. All you have to do is ask. The expectation of others is only an illusion. You were not born to listen to fear. You were taught to listen to it. You were taught. Taught. Okay? These are the conditioned things that we are taught to do. Visualize any decision in your life as a fork in the road. How does your body react when you imagine your travels down each path? At first glance, one may look easier to traverse, but the destination will cause anxiety and a heavy heart. Another path may be more difficult to walk, but the destination will feel light and calm. When you silence your mind and listen to your intuition, the signpost will always be obvious. Right. Very great emphasis on thinking outside the box. In other words, not with the eyes of the mind, not with the eyes of the body of humanity, but the eyes of the soul and your intuition, Pisces. We always go back to that, right? And it's true. If you really think about, if you imagine yourself down in a path, and that path, you, your body will react instinctly. It's almost like the soul in your body. The soul in your body. Your energies go, ugh. That's a clear indication. A lot of us in the past have said, well, it's just because you're lazy. Well, there's a voice inside of my head that sometimes says there's got to be a better way. Okay, listen to that Beautiful as well. Pisces. Now here's a part of the video that if you're not subscribed already, I'm going to ask you to do that right now. Click that notification bell to all. Why don't you leave a like and a comment once you're done watching. All of this helps support this channel. I post twice a day, 9.45 a.m. and 9.45 p.m. for the extended Eastern Time. I have a Patreon link. I have also affiliate links to all the cards below and a one-time donation link. Right now, if you join my personal website, which is free, you get a free video not available anywhere from me as a thank you. This website will be the key to any free or paid readings and giveaways I may do in the future. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to let you get back to your reading now. Take care. So I'm using the field to row to do the second reading. We're going to look at the Emperor, the Strength card in reverse, and the Lover's cards in reverse. Now the Emperor for me was the quintessential card, the card of the Father. I used the example as a father who goes to work all of his life, comes back day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, until he's able to save enough money, pay down his house, retire. We've had that uh, example shown to us so many times of what to strive for. And that will offer you security. It will offer you everything in the end. The only problem is, is that it's a great big challenge. You have the um, Prince of Wands. You're always instigating something. You're always working at something. It's always toiling at something. It's always looking for the answer. It's always such hard work. It's always such ah, a burdensome type thing, right? 
And there's always the fear that somehow all of this will be taken away at a moment's notice because there's pure examples of that, okay? Where there has to be a reset. Man loses his job, loses his house, loses his family. It's, it's like fear sets in, right? Suddenly, oh, oh, he's had such hardships, you know? Like somebody derailed his train. We need to stop following this one template. We need to create different ones. With different ones comes the seven in the end. It offers us different choices, not just one choice. One success, one failure. There's many options. Okay. So what came here is the Nine of Wands resilience, right? We had the strength in reverse. The strength is like overpowering something uh, in reverse. It's like trying to physically overcome something when the, the power in itself is inside. Okay, so the Nine of Wands, it's always telling you, you have to be resilient, you have to, you have to get over things, you have to show your true, true strength, and in fact, it's an illusion. It really is an illusion. The personal power comes within you. You can let it go at any point in time. You can let go of all of this and fix this disharmony, this, this lovers in reverse, okay? Right. And then you have the Two of Cups. Okay. I like the Lovers in Reverse and you have the Two of Cups in uh, Upright and it's Union. So it's begging you to take small steps into, re in, into regaining the union to yourself. I mean, this isn't going to happen. For some of you, maybe, I guess it could. Uh, you could just like snap into it and that's it. You're on your way and everything is good. But a lot of us, it's a work in progress. We just keep going. We just keep rechecking ourselves, revamping ourselves, redefining or abolishing the definitions and what they all meant. How can we redo it so that it matches what we want, our desires? Instead of always feeling like this is just the way it is. The very two, four, eight. Okay. And add five to that. But in this case, I've been feeling the very... I feel it, the two, four, eight are the building blocks. Five and sevens are the conflicts and struggles. But the two, four, eight are like... This is... it. It's not a struggle... Because it's been taught to us that that's just the way it is. Okay? Understand? I hope you understand. My clock runs very different with numbers. 3, 6, 9's for me are vibrations. Number 3 and 6 are the ways we can connect to our spirituality. 9 is the ultimate. I feel that 9 is, well, who we are spiritually. Just period. Without the body. The two, four, five, seven, eight are all vibrations from the planet, our humanity. Okay? Alright, so four of cups with the perspective card. Ooh, perspective. So that is, of course, let me see. That's a hangman. Twelve. Okay? And here comes the three in the middle. When you meditate on something, you have the four of cups going meditating on the choices. That's what I said this morning. Okay, This is the past. This is everything that's been offered so far. And you're thinking of a new way of doing it. How can we get out of this? How can we get out of this stagnated, stagnating energy where it's telling me this is everything that I want, but I know deep within me that it isn't. That I don't never want to stop working at something that I'm passionate about. That I don't want to retire from life. That I just want to simply find something that I want to be doing. And continually do it. Okay? And not always being chasing the carrot. Okay? Living my life in ease. Living my life so that it feels effortless. Not like I need to reach certain points to get certain things. You have the Four of Cups here. This is, this what, you're, you're, this is what you're focusing on. 
okay? You want to remove the blocks. You want to feel, you want to remove the way you feel stuck, okay? This is all about getting stuck. The Four of Cups, the Eight of Swords is I'm stuck. And you want to get out of that. You don't want to live in the past definitions of what it meant to be where you are, okay? That could be relationship-wise, you know? You pursue, you fall in love, you marry, and then you become stagnant, old, and, you know, all of that stuff. That doesn't, you can change the rule book on that, okay? Invite your partner to play with you, to have fun, okay? Just to, to build a beautiful world together, to remove this. Okay, to make decisions, to remove those blocks. Because I've been talking about just, you know, money and houses and all that. You, you're talking about physical relationships with people too. Okay, a lot of people over the years, they say, oh, well, just the love went away. Because you're following a pattern that everybody has established before. There's the heady excitement of meeting somebody. There's the falling in love and the honeymoon phase. Then, then there's a marriage phase and the kids phase. And then there's the getting comfortably and forgetting about each other phase. And then there's a growing hold and holding hand phase. And while some of that sounds really fun and okay, there are parts in there that you can change. Okay? You can change things up. You can make your relationship sexy and important and playful at any part in there, okay? There's no set rules. You can change it all up. You just need to break down those definitions. You make them go away and build your own. The Princess of Wands. Oh, there she is again. You had the Prince and now you have the Princess. Princess of Wands. It's written Exploration. Eight of Cups. Right. Explore your cup spices. Explore the cups that have fallen away. Okay? Were they empty because you left them empty? Were they empty because they diluted with... with... Uh, did they get dried up from the sun and the, the water just kind of, the, the, you know, it, it, it dried up and then you just have nothing to fill them back up with, okay? I'm explaining this badly, but the, I understand what they're saying. Explore the ways that you can refill or fill up your cups, period. Don't just look at them here, okay? Some people say, well, I left those cups behind because I needed to. Because that's what felt right for me at the time. Absolutely. I'm not saying to go back into a, um, a lot of people have what they, I hear a lot about narcissistic relationships and stuff in the comment sections. Yeah, nobody needs any of that. Okay. That's boundaries on how to not be mistreated and that's okay. And you can go to the lengths you need to, to stay away from that, if it means moving, okay? To get the point across to whoever's doing it, that you are not going to stay in that energy. And you will do whatever you need to, to protect and care of yourself, okay? Personally, I've never put up with that very long, and I'm a very in-your-face to people who try to harm me, and that I notice. So... That that energy never stays very very close to me. I'm the type of person of going, does everybody run away from you? Maybe that's an indication of something, don't you think? And I know it's nasty, but sometimes the truth hurts, doesn't it? Um, you have temperance here. So I'm just saying, you don't have to stay in that kind of energy. I'm talking about stuff that made you look back and saying, what really happened? relationships of people where, I don't know, something just kind of, you know, I feel like the cup fell over and the liquid ran away. And you're looking and going, was there anything there that I could have done? 
Was it a preconceived thing? Did we both subscribe to something that really didn't suit us, but we had been taught and conditioned to believe so? Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. The temperance card, right? Okay. You subscribe to those four instead of that one, not realizing that you could rebalance the scales. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. Oh, I have the elephant underneath always telling me that I need to let go, right? Ah, five of five of disc, and it's called destitution. I like that. It is well. I don't like destitution, but I do like the fact that there are moments in life that make you feel alone. Spirit always tells me with this card that it is an illusion. You are never alone. We aren't alone. Even now, as you're listening to me, you may be alone in a room. And this is a pre-recorded video, but you are not alone. You're not alone. You're listening to me. And even though we're separated by time, I'm talking to you. And I feel you right now. So, we're never alone. Okay? It's just a matter of energy and how we perceive it, Pisces. So, are you really alone in these four? Are you just not seeing it the way it's supposed to? When you put those four and that one together, it does do five. And look at how they are all together. Okay? Just think about that. You have the four of pentacles for Pisces. Again, as I said, representing the four over here. So, if we take that, we have the three of wands. Here's that connection to spirit. Okay? And look how it's connected. The Four of Pentacles, separating you, making you feel like you're in control. If you simply get rid of one of these and create a circle, look at that, this Three of Wands. You're finally doing something, you're launching. Your vision is coming to life. Alright, Pisces, one more. Nine of Discs, culmination. Then you start having more out of less. See, you went from a four to a three, but you have more, more choices. And those choices culminate into something fantastic and wonderful for you. Okay? And look at that underneath the deck. The six of wands. Success. There you are. Succeeding. The princess of wands. With your brand new sexy clothes, taking the lead with the king. Succeeding in all, all your glory. So, don't let the past or how you've been thought to relate to certain things be the end-all and be-all of anything that you do in your life. You can always, always tweak things to make them suit. Sometimes, Pisces, I will tell you, you tweak them so much that you won't even recognize the original format. But, the end result is that you are happy you are playing in your life, you are taking flight, and you are accomplishing wonderful things. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm sending you love, light, and blessings. Take care, Pisces.